and today I am at St Peter's Church in Turwick which is just off the A272 uh, near Rogate in West Sussex. Cynthia is with me somewhere, she's away taking photographs. The breeze is getting up now and we're at, uh, just coming into St Peter's Church. It was built within a century of the Norman Conqu Conquest. It's built of sandstone and the presence of the dark brown in the sandstone indicates there might have been some ore uh, which was you know, later exploited for the iron industry. But you've got a couple of tie bars just under the, the eaves which indicates that there's some movement in the ground here. So that's just all tying it all together. But it's of a tiled roof. This is the south wall of the church and we've got this curved stone which is stabilising the church from the shifting ground that the church is built on. I'm just filming this end wall, the west wall of the church between 1150 and 1500. I'm just entering the church now and the church was lit by just one small window above the door and I've just walked through the door and it was lit by this just this one tiny window which I'm going to tilt up now to give you an idea of just how small that window is it is tiny but it's set right back into the into the wall now the font dates from around about the same date but at a later time, I think it was about a century later, that window there and one other, and that's the south wall, were built in. The light's streaming through there at the moment, so it's not making a very good shot. Between 1500 and 1800, there was obviously new prosperity about, and from the iron industry, they were able to provide a new, val uh, uh, sorry, a valuable silver chalice uh, and, and a, a pattern which is now kept in the cathedral treasury. Between 1840 and 1900, it seems that there was a, a huge program of repairs and uh, rebuilding took place. Uh, and I think the southwest walls were repaired the chancel arch, which uh, I did put in a, another video just now, that had to be rebuilt twice. It's quite a, quite a feature of, of the church. Well, I'm walking towards the altar in the east window. Now, the, the east window was installed in 1855 by... Fanny, and she was uh, Captain Lyon's widow to commemorate her daughter, son and husband. Now the Lyon family built the original Dangstein in 1840, um, but that's a beautiful window and it's a lovely thing to have commemorate the family. Interestingly, in the corner of the, the, the west wall, west and south wall, is the baptisms that's been carried out in St. Peter's. And the first one was on April the 22nd, 1571. And if I flick through these pages, the very last one was in 2017. And that was on August 6th. It's not a very clear picture there because it's plastic. But I've never seen baptisms hung in this way. They're usually in books. And you'd also get the, the marriages and births and deaths. But there's nothing like that here that I can see.
Well, I've just left the churchyard and the church of St. Peter's, and I've come into this field, and this field was owned by the Hodges family in 1936, and they lived at Finding House. But they gave part of the field to the church uh, to extend the, the graveyard and just beyond those trees and the hedge that's where the, the field used to go down to the modern church that's part of the graveyard hill a chart was made in 1951 of the graves in the new burial ground but it seems unfortunately some of the headstones couldn't be read so they couldn't obviously identify the people that are buried there but Mrs Hodges and her husband are actually buried in the northeast corner uh, of the churchyard and they both died sadly in 1939 the rest of the field was actually left to the National Trust and they still care for it today as the church field, better it's better actually better known really as the looping field. Now Cynthia's away up there taking photographs of the looping field and on many occasions I've driven along the A272 from Midhurst towards Rogate and you see loop, some patches of loopings along the sides of the the uh, grass verges, not knowing that this looping field was here, but this is the first time it's been reseeded for some years. But the colours are just spectacular. It's beautiful. They survived a very bad storm the other night. Um, a lot of people think, including myself, that they might get you know, actually ruined. But in the lower part of the field that I've just come up through, there are patches of lupins there, um, which suggest that obviously the seeds have spread. But, you know, this is probably 50% of the field. And it is just beautiful. It's a hidden little treasure just off the 272 near Rogate. Well, Cynthia and I have now finished our, our walk round St Peter's of Turwick. We've also been uh, up to the Lupin Field. So we're just about to go off, probably have a cup of coffee somewhere, which is not unusual for us. So, but it's been a lovely little walk around Turwick Church, um, St Peter's Church in Turwick. Uh, I can highly recommend it. It's a very plain Norman church, um, but very interesting. So it's just off of the 272, A272, heading towards Rogate from Midhurst. Um, it is signposted, but uh, it's a lovely little place. So this will be Kevin and Cynthia saying bye-bye for now, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye for bye. now. Bye. bye, -bye.